um, uh, we have prayerfully um, uh, come come to this, to this place because uh, it is beautiful to just uh, be in his presence be in the presence of the Lord no matter where we are right um, and I want to share with you as our welcome uh, Psalm 121 121 which is at all times, in the good and in the bad, <laughs> it is good to be reminded of the Lord's goodness. And it says this. You can even, if you want to close your eyes or just say, just focus on the words of this song. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Listen to this. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. The Lord watches over us. The Lord is our shade. As we talked about last Sunday, just say, the Lord is our rock, our stronghold. And he is all of those things when we choose to believe that he is our rock. When we choose to believe in faith that the Lord is here, that the Lord is near to us, that he watches over each and every one of us. Where does our help come from today? I welcome everyone here to the house of the Lord, um, wherever you are. And just take a moment to recognize who, who God is in your life. God, thank you. Thank you. We come before you just grateful for another day of life. Grateful for bringing us here, God, and just um, allowing us to worship you. Let today be a day that we choose to worship you with all our being. Uh, let us not hold back because you do not. <laughs> let us fight our battles in praise and thanksgiving to you this morning. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Scripture says where two or three are gathered, uh, there I am with them also. Not me, but, but God. And so, uh, you know, there's just a few of us here, uh, but that's okay because we know that the Lord is here. We can feel him in this place. Amen? Amen. Yes, sir. We can feel him here. Um, so for those that, are, that will be watching now or later, <laughs> you know, uh, we appreciate you joining us. We're going we're gonna to have our time of tithes and offering, but tithes and offering looks a little bit different during this pandemic. So uh, what we've been doing over the last few weeks and what we'll continue to do now is if you have an offering that you want to give, you can come up at any time or you can give it at the end of the service. Um, but that is our step in faith. You know, we, we know that God fights our battles. He fights for us. And, and giving him just a little bit of what he's given us, giving him back just a little bit of what he's given us is our step of faith. It's our step of reliance on him. It's, essentially, it's the same thing as praying, you know. It's, uh, it's for us to recognize that God is the provider. Uh, and even though we don't have a lot, we have something because he fights for us, right? Um, so as we sing our songs this morning and as we uh, go into some, um, some, a time of worship, a time of adoration, uh, feel free to come up and drop your tithes in the, in the bucket, or the, the bucket, the, <laughs> in the plates here. Um, 
it's almost time for those buckets. <laughs> My goodness. But uh, would you join us in, in singing a few songs? But before we do, let's just pray over whatever gift is given. God, we thank you that you are here all around us. We thank you that your presence is so thick that we can feel it. Uh, we thank you for all of the gifts that you give us, Lord, great and small. And so we pray now that you would accept just a little bit of what you've given us, that you would take that back, Lord, whether it's our monetary dollar bills or change, or whether it's just our worship, our, our voices, our songs. Um, God, would you accept this as our humble offering before you, Lord? Uh, we love you, we thank you, and we know that you are going to do great things in this community. And we just pray that uh, you would speak to us today. We thank you, God, and we praise you. We pray our this in your name. Amen. Oh, also, before we uh, get into our songs, I do want to give a special welcome to our guest speaker for the day, uh, Mr. Scotty Williams, Scotty Brown. Uh, we, we go pretty far back now. It doesn't feel like it's been six years, but it's been six years. It's crazy. Um, he was at our wedding, you know, worked at camp with Christine, um, and I don't know if he knows this, but he means a lot to us, you know. Um, we're very proud of the man you've become, Scotty. And we're, I'm going to try my hardest not to cry during your sermon today. <laughs> but no, we love you, and, uh, and we're just grateful to have you and your crew here, right? <laughs> that being said, <laughs> let's, uh, let's start our official singing, our time of worship here. So please, please stand um, or just uh, sing to the Lord with all your heart and all your mind.
to our hearts, God. You are present in every moment of our lives. And that's why we choose to praise you. Because we believe that that is true in our lives today, God. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for you are good. You are good. You are good. In, in Jesus' name. Amen. So the next song we know is a, is a pretty familiar one, but it's a, I love this song. I like it more in Spanish, honestly. <laughs> but I love this song because it speaks to who God is. You know, the last song we, we spoke how God is, is surrounding us. He's fighting our battles for us. Uh, he makes a way when it seems like there is no way. He does. You know, he makes a way when it seems like there is no way. That is so practical <laughs> here in this pandemic, right? You know, it seems like there's no way for us for us to get back to work or get back to, quote, normal. But guess what? We serve a God who has done it before, and we serve a God who will do it again. Amen? Yeah, amen. He is a way maker. He's a miracle worker, a promise keeper, a light in the darkness. Would you sing this one with us?
to root out, to take away whatever in our hearts that is displeasing to you. Um, God, just help us, just whatever, what we're singing, what we're declaring that you are way maker, that you are a miracle worker, that you are a promise keeper. That is who you are. God, that, that we can believe what we're saying with our words, God, that what we're singing is not just words that float in the air, God, that it is who you are in our lives, God, that you are a promise keeper, a way maker, things that are impossible, you make them possible according to your will, God, we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
Thank you, Jesus, because your promise still stands in our life. Yes, and today we just believe that, believe that, that your promise still stands. No matter what is going on in our lives, in the good and in the bad, you are with us. You walk us through. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord this morning. This letter is from Paul and Timothy. We are writing to the church in Thessalonica to, to whom you belong to God, the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. May God give you grace and peace. We always thank God for all of you and pray for you constantly. As we pray to our God and Father about you, we thank you of your faithful work, your loving deeds, and the enduring hope you have because of our Lord Jesus Christ. We know, dear brothers and sisters, that God loves you and has chosen you to be his own people. For when we brought you the good news, it was not only with words, but also with power. For the Holy Spirit gave you full assurance that what we said was true. And you know of our concern for you from the way we lived when we were with you. So you received the message with joy from the Holy Spirit in spite of the severe suffering it brought you. In this way, you imitated both us and the Lord. As a result, you have become an example to all the believers in Greece, throughout both Macedonia and Achaia. And now the word of the Lord is ringing out from you to people everywhere, even beyond Macedonia and Achaia, for wherever we go, we find people telling us about your faith in God. We don't need to tell them about it, for they keep talking about the wonderful welcome you gave us and how you turned away from the idols and served the living and true God. And they speak of how you were looking forward to the coming of God's Son from heaven, Jesus, whom God raised from the dead. He is the one who has rescued us from the terrors of the coming judgment. Amen. Um, we just want to take a moment to pray for, for our speaker. Um, dear Heavenly Father, uh, we come before you uh, grateful, grateful because we know that you are here. We know that you are near. You are dear to our hearts, God, that you are here. Um, allow us to, to listen. And um, as we've said before, uh, to not just be hearers of your word, but doers of your word. Sure. So that what we hear that we can also obey mm -hmm. and take action to whatever it is that you're speaking to us this morning. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, how we doing, church? Test one, okay. two. Woo! We good? <laughs> hey, God is good, man. That's amazing worship. And we're going to continue to worship together. Um, but real quick, before we dive into the word and before we uh, take a deeper look at the scripture that we just heard, um, I want to do a song for y'all. This song is called Needing um, by an artist. His name is Sajan. And um, really, this is a prayer for us as we continue to worship, as we continue to prepare our hearts to receive what God is already speaking to us. He already has been speaking. Um, but as we continue to worship together, um, this song is simply called Needing, and it uses the word I. Talks about how God is all I ever needed. Um, I believe it. It's no secret. And so as I sing this song, I encourage you and I just pray that this can be a song that you can also say. That you can also say, God, you're all I ever needed. Nothing more, nothing less. DJ, drop that track. <laughs> Now I know you what I needed When it hurts and 
dropping. I ain't gonna worry about the way they're tossing now. I know you, but I need it. I believe it, it's no secret. When it feels like I've been bleeding, you come and pick up all the pieces. Now I know you never leave it. I'm hurting, I can feel it. But when I go to write, I, I don't know what to write about. Oh, ha, ha, ha. There's fragments of my brain on the floor. Please don't attack me for the mess I make. Lord, I really need your grace. And I know you're going to hear me out. I, you got me in a secret place. And I know just what I'm thinking about. I, when I don't say a word, you know just how I'm feeling. You see me. Now I know what I needed. I believe it, it's no secret When it feels like I've been pleading You come and pick up all the pieces Now I know you know I need it When it hurts and I can feel it Now I know you never leave it Here I'm safe inside your keeping Y'all see this with me? Now I know you what I needed. I believe you, it's no secret. When it feels like I've been bleeding, you come pick up all the pieces. Now I know you what I needed. I'm hurt and I can feel it. Now I know. God is all I ever needed. If you believe that, put your hands together. God is good. He is all we ever need. Amen. Well, thank y'all so much once again for having me. Captain Josh. Back when I met him, he was a lieutenant. So it uh, feels weird calling you captain now, but it feels weird to hear it. <laughs> but man, it's a, it's a blessing to be here today just to worship with y'all. Um, wonderful people. And I just want to, real quick, ask God to do something. If you're able to, I want to ask you to stand for me, please, if you're able to. See, that some people now like, ah, don't want to stand for me. All right, now sit back down. Right here. Stretch out those little legs a little bit. All right, stand back up for me one more time. Exercise. All right, y'all can have a seat. Um, so we're going to look into this word, First Thessalonians that we looked at, that we read this morning. And really as I've been thinking and preparing and praying and asking God, God, what is it you want me to say here in this place today? And this word came to me and it was imitate. And it was, it was weird, like, God, what are you talking about? Imitate, like, what do you, what do you mean? And so, I went on Google and I typed in imitate in the in just imitate Bible verse. Like, where does this show up, God? Why are you putting this word um, in my heart? And that's what led me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, which is what we're going to talk about today. So as I dive into this word, as we look into this word together, I want y'all to remember one word and it's imitate. Can y'all say imitate? Imitate. 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 Let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you for allowing us to be here. And so, Lord, as we dive into your word, and now we ask for you to clear our mind, clear our thoughts. God, in this time, help us to just remove the distractions going on in our life right now and to just solely focus on you. And so, God, as I stand here, I pray that you speak in me and through me. May it be your words, not mine. May it be for your glory and not mine. And Lord, I just pray if there's anything that I say that may not be of you, may the people listening, may the people watching just render that null and void. So God, be with us today as we dive into your word. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
Amen. 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 Well, First Thessalonians is an interesting uh, chapter, interesting book as a whole. And uh, the Apostle Paul is writing this to the church in Thessalonica. And we hear some backstory about this these people that he's writing to, and essentially what's happening is Paul went here, he went with some of his co-workers, they went and did ministry here, planted churches, converted non-believers, spoke the word of God, spoke truth, and many people came to believe in him. But um, things weren't all handy-dandy there, because as we know, even today, Christians aren't welcome everywhere, right? Christians aren't welcome everywhere, and so here in this church, here in Thessalonica, they were um, suffering, they were being persecuted, they were, nobody, like, people weren't fans of them, like, yo, you a Christian? People wanted to beat them up, and it was just, it wasn't all good. And so, real quick, I really quick want to read that backstory for you. We're not going to spend too much time, but we can read that in Acts chapter 17. Um, and I encourage you to, if you have the word with you, whether it be on your phone, whether it be, um, you have the Bibles, anybody can carry Bibles anymore in 2020? Is that a, is that a thing? <laughs> yeah, he's got one. There we go, yeah, the homie in the back's like, yeah, got that word. But we're going to look at Acts chapter 17, uh, chapter, or verse 1. I'm not going to spend too much time here, but I just want to give us some context in the, who Paul is writing to here in, in 1 Thessalonians. This is Acts chapter 17. Now, when they had passed through Amphilosis and Apollonia, this is uh, Paul and his co-workers, when they passed through these places, they came to Thessalonica where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul went in, as was his custom, on three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead, saying, this Jesus, whom I proclaim to you, is the Christ. So Paul comes into this place, he comes into this church in Thessalonica, and he comes spitting that fire. He's like, Jesus is the cross. He is the Son of God. He came so that if you believe in Him, if you put your trust in Him, that you can have eternal life. Makes sense? He goes into this place. He's not from here, but he's visiting, passing through. He stops, spits that fire. This Jesus, whom I proclaim to you, is the Christ. Verse 4. And some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a great many of the devout Greeks, and not a few, and not a few of the leading women. So he goes on, spits fire, talks about Jesus, and here we see that people repent, they put their trust in him, convert, become Christians, both Jews and non-Jews. Y'all still with me? Yeah. But, but the Jews were jealous. How many of y'all ever been jealous before? But the Jews were jealous. They were hot because. They were like, Yo, why y'all following these guys instead of following us? These Jews were jealous. And taking some wicked men of the rebel, they formed a mob. I know today we've been seeing mobs all over the news, protests, some, some uh, non-violent, some violent. They formed this mob. Set the city in an uproar and attacked the house of Jason, seeking to bring him out to the crowd. Now this guy Jason, basically, he was the host of Paul. He was the guy who Paul was staying with, because remember, Paul is not from Thessalonica. So he goes, and Jason is the host. He's like, yeah, come into my house, just like these beautiful pastors are kind of hosting me here today. Um, Jason was Paul and his crew, their host. So they go to this guy's house. They're mad. They're jealous that these people are converting and following Paul and recognizing who Jesus is. And when they could not find them, they couldn't find Paul because they did. They wasn't at Jason's crib. They dragged Jason and some of the brothers before the city authorities shouting, These men who have turned the world upside down have come here also. And Jason has received them. I'm talking about Paul and his co-worker, because Jason received them. He brought them in. And they, were, they are all acting against the decrees of Caesar. Now keep this in mind. So it was a custom. You got to follow Caesar. You ain't got no time. We don't want you following any of these, any gods or Jesus. Or we don't want any of that. You better follow Caesar. That's what uh, the culture of Thessalonica was. You better follow him and no one else. Saying that there is another king, Jesus. Again, jealous. I mean, y'all been jealous before. Another king, Jesus. 
and the people and the city authorities were disturbed, were disturbed when they heard these things. And when they had taken money as security from Jason and the rest, they let him go. All right, real quick, I'll read 10 through uh, 15. Stay with me here. So the brothers immediately went to Paul and Sil Silas, away by night to Berea. And when they arrived, they uh, went into the Jewish synagogue. So it got so hectic there in Thessalonica that they like, yo, Paul and Silas, y'all can't stay here, man. The people was getting crazy. They coming for you. They trying to take your head off. Y'all go ahead and go to Berea. Stay there a while. We gotta, you know, make sure things are safe for you because we don't want you to, we don't want you to get murdered or persecuted. You know, you got work to do. You got a ministry and a message to carry. So now these Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica. So now he's in this place called Berea. They received the word with all eagerness. So still, he's preaching that word, preaching that Jesus fire to these people here. Explaining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Many of them therefore believed. Somebody say believed. Believed. Many of them therefore believed. With not a few Greek women of high standing as well as men. So both men and women were receiving this word, were trusting and putting their trust in Jesus. But... Watch this. But when the Jews from Thessalonica, remember these, were, these people were jealous, right? They hot. They found out word that these people went to this other place, converted more people. When they heard about it, you know, I just think that you know, so many times we can stuff can spread fast, especially in today's times. All you gotta do is send a simple tweet. Everybody knows what's happening. So word got out to these people back in Thessalonica. What's been going on? And once again, they were hot. Um, where are we at here? Verse uh, 13. But when the Jews from Thessalonica learned that the word of God was proclaimed by Paul at Berea also, they came there too. Now these people were so mad, not only that Paul and Silas came to Thessalonica, but to Berea, that they were like, let's go over there and cause more trouble. Like, what? Y'all that jealous? That y'all can't even stay in your own place. I gotta go and seek these people out. So verse 14. Then the brothers immediately sent Paul off on his way to the sea. But Silas and Timothy remained there. Those who conducted Paul brought him as far as Athens. And after receiving a command from Silas and Timothy to come to him as soon as possible, they departed. So as we can see, just a little bit of context on who Paul is writing to. Paul has to leave this church and... Um, he leaves Silas and Timothy there to build up these, these new Christians because obviously they just, they're new Christians. They don't know what it means to follow Jesus, so they need somebody to mentor them, to teach them, to show them what it means to follow Christ. And so Paul writes this letter now, going back to the first Thessalonians. Y'all still with me? Yeah. And he writes this, this letter to them to reconnect because he's been gone. He hasn't been there. Uh, he's been away, so he wanted to make sure that things were going smooth. So he actually sent Timothy there to check on these people. You know, we know that they've been persecuted. We know that the Jews there is jealous, mad, upset because of their faith. So he sends Timothy, and Timothy comes back, brings him news that hey, things are going well, they're prospering, and uh, this is what Paul says to encourage them. Uh, we're going to start in verse two. First Thessalonians. He says, we give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers. So he's like, yo, we remember you. We remember you've been working. Um, and I think sometimes today as Christians, we, we forget to think about our brothers and sisters who may be away from us, who may be far away. But Paul makes it very clear that he's constantly been mentioning them um, in their prayers. And it's important for us to do the same for fellow brothers and sisters in Christ to be praying for them, especially in places where, like we in the United States right now, um, with this whole COVID thing going around, and we're just like struggling because we can't meet together, and we have to wear a mask on and all these different things, but there's Christians in places where this, you can't even, you can't, if you meet together, you, you dead. <laughs> like, let's just be honest. Like if, if somebody was to come and we were in some place and they found us meeting together here in this place, it was your head, literally. And so it's important for us to be thinking about them. 
especially as we're, you know, we're trying to cope with how things are in the church and how worship should be looking in the United States. There's fellow brothers and sisters who can't even do this, can't even wear a mask, can't even stay six feet apart without people coming for the head. Again, jealous. Somebody say jealous. Jealous. So we get things. Remembering, verse 3, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul here, he mentions and he praises a couple of things that these people had. Their work of faith. These people, despite the persecution, despite people, um, these Jews, wanting them to give their life to Caesar and not to Jesus. They worked in their faith. I wonder how many of us work in our faith, despite our environments. In labor of love, Still showing love. And the Bible calls us, and even Jesus calls us, to love our enemies. Now you can catch what I just said. <laughs> to love our enemies. Love our enemies. We don't want to love our enemies, do we? It's hard for us sometimes, but even still, this church, they show the labor of love and a steadfastness of hope. They didn't really understand, you know, what was going to happen, but they had hope. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you. Who is he? He is God. He has chosen you. Because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. So basically, Paul is basically saying, you're not only did you believe just because we told you about who Jesus was. That's not the only reason why you believe, but you also believe because of the power of the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know, we, we've heard the word, some of us, I don't know how long you've been in the church, but sometimes we can hear words, whether it be about faith, whether it be about, hey, guess what I saw on the news? Um, so many times we can hear a word, but do we actually believe it? Do we actually receive it? Or do we just say, nah, I don't believe what you're talking about, man. That's, that's fake news. I ain't got no time to be listening to what you're saying. But here, these people, this church, not only do they hear this word, but they believe it. And it's not because it isn't true, right? We know that Jesus actually is who he said he is. He actually is the Son of God. He actually did come on this earth. He actually did live a perfect life. He actually did die on the cross for our sins. He actually did rise again three days later. He actually did make a way for us. Amen? Y'all still with me, church? Amen. Paul is praising them for their faith. Despite persecution, despite all this hostility, despite all this jealousy, these people kept the faith. You know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sake. Then we get to verse 6. If y'all remember, there was this word that got It was imitate. Y'all remember that? Imitate. Verse 6, watch this. And you became imitators. Somebody say imitate. Imitate. You became imitators of us. And of the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit. Come on. <laughs> when you think of this word imitate, basically what imitate means is just to copy. And I don't know if y'all ever played the game. Anybody ever played the game uh, Follow the Leader? What do you do in that game? Whatever the leader does, you follow what they do. You know, if they go down the slide at the park, you go down the slide with them. They come and do some jumping jacks. You do some jumping jacks. When they raise their left hand, you do that. Imitate. This church is imitating Christ. And when we look at our lives, who, who are we imitating? I'm let that marinate. Who are we imitating? There's so many things in today's world that we want to be like. When we see somebody uh, wearing a certain outfit, we like the way somebody dressed like, oh, now I want to start dressing like that. Or we see somebody with a certain pair of shoes, oh, I want to get those shoes. Or we um, see all these trends, 
that happen, and we want to imitate those things. You think you're like TikTok. Anybody in here on TikTok? See, we got, we got a TikTok in the back. We see all these things on TikTok with all these dances, right? And so we're like, yo, I want to imitate that. I want to learn that dance. So we put our phone up. We practice. We spend hours, you know, trying to learn the next dance. And then eventually we press record and we imitate that dance. You know, we use the music in the background. Like, he's, he's over there like, no, I don't know what you're talking about, bro. <laughs> but this idea of imitate, TikTok is a perfect example of you trying to imitate something, somebody. You see something, you want, oh, I want to be like that, or I want to do what they're doing, whatever the case may be. But the question that I have for you is who are you imitating? Are you just trying to imitate the world? Are you trying to just be like those around you? Or are you trying to be like Christ? Because this church in Thessalonica, Verse 6, you became imitators of us. And it seems like it would be easy to do, but when you think about all of the outside forces that try to prevent us, even then, these people, trying to prevent them from imitating and following Christ. You know, growing up in a culture where you were brought up to live a certain way, to um, pray to a certain person, but now they're called to turn away from everything that they've ever learned and were taught in the past and now to follow Jesus. Because I think sometimes we, we pick up on some of our, our bad habits, or maybe not bad habits, but just habits in general, um, just based off of those around us, based off of how we were raised, right? Um, it's easy for us to imitate our community, the culture around us. You know, if you grow up in Let's say California, you're gonna you're gonna imitate a different culture than say if you were to be brought up in like a, a New York. Right? You imitate things, you get this accent, this southern Kentucky. I don't I don't have a southern Kentucky accent, I wouldn't say. Uh, but these things that we imitate or that we copy from our culture, and that's what these people had. But they realized that they were imitating the wrong things. They weren't imitating Christ. And there's so many things that we have, so much baggage, so much sin, so many things that aren't of him that we need to let go and be like, yo, is this of Jesus or not? And if we're imitating, if we're doing things that aren't of him, that aren't being a reflection, that aren't copying what he's doing, back to that follow leader example, if you don't follow what the leader's doing, then you're not doing a good job of imitating, right? And as Christians, if we're trying to follow God, if we're trying to follow the leader, the leader being Jesus, then we need to be doing whatever Jesus is doing, how Jesus lived. We sit and wonder. I had a conversation with somebody the other day, and he was talking about, um, you know, we were talking about COVID and coronavirus, and should we be talking to people and uh, doing evangelism and all these different things. And it's like, I brought the question, what would Jesus do? The truth is we know what Jesus would do because we have his word. We've seen him um, in the Gospels, going to the sick, going to the, to the uh, weary, to the homeless, to lepers, people who have leprosy, this disease. And if you even touched them, you was getting it. And I'm sure Jesus didn't have no, I'm sure he didn't put on a rubber glove and a, and a full face shield. He was like, yo, let me protect myself. I'm not saying that you shouldn't you know, wear a mask or whatever, safety. What I'm saying is, who are you imitating? Are you just imitating the world? Okay, government, government, you want me to do this? I'll just follow. Okay. Or are you imitating Christ? Let's go back to verse 6. And you became imitators. Somebody say imitate. Imitate. Of us. And of the Lord. Because the truth is, we need leaders. We need people to show us what it means to walk in Christ. So that's why Paul makes it very clear. You became imitators of us, who is, uh, who is we're, we're leading you, but we're also following Christ. Right? So as leaders of the church, people are following us. People are watching what we're doing, whether, whether we know it or not. We have little siblings, little, little nieces and nephews, little cousins. They're watching us. So who are you imitating in the way that you live your life? Let's keep going, verse 7. So that you became an example 
to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. Now watch this. Because of their faith, because of their trust, what happened? They became an example. Did I catch that? Verse 7. They became an example to all the believers. In places that wasn't just in Thessalonica, in Macedonia and in Achaia. When we think about you know, going back to trends, how quickly trends can spread. You post a TikTok video, the whole world sees it, picks up on that trend instantly. These people were following Christ. Other cities, other cultures were picking up on how they were living. Word was spreading, getting out there about who they were, what they were doing. And so as Christians, as people, as we follow Christ, the way that we live, if you do what you, if you follow Christ the way that he's calling you to follow him, people's going to see that. You may not get the glory for it, you may not get the, the social media likes or whatever the case. You may not get all the praise and you may not make it in the newspaper or whatever the case may be. But when you imitate Christ, you're an example. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have been reaching out for me, to me and just saying, asking me, yo, how is it that you're dealing with this whole situation and this whole COVID thing and everything the way that you are? It's because of God. I'm just trying to follow him. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. But I'm just trying to be that example. So that those around us, not just in this community, but when you follow Christ, people gonna know there's something different about you. Yo, who is this guy, this guy Ricky, talking about God? What's, what, what, is, what is this man all about? So they became an example to others. For not only as the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and in Achaia, but your faith in God, so I say faith, faith, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere, not just in Thessalonica, but their faith has gone forth everywhere in us. When we keep the faith, when we trust in God, that faith goes with us everywhere. You make a small impact. You just have one conversation with somebody. And they can see that thing. For they themselves, verse 9, y'all still with it? All right, just check. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. How you turned to God. I want you to, to think about that for a second. In order to turn to God, that means you had to move, right? If you turn, that means you change direction, right? If you're just constantly going straight, you're not turning. You're just going straight. You know, one of the things that I love about living in Kentucky that I learned, I used to live in Michigan for two years before I moved back, is the roads in Michigan, is they ain't no turns. You're going down the highway, and it's just straight, 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 straight. <laughs> But then you come down here and it's like, you know, I like the turns and you see all the mountains and all that. I love the change in scenery in Kentucky. Something I, I took for granted. Um, but when you turn, you make a shift, right? And these people, this church, Paul praises them. And how you turn to God. Now, when you turn, I mean, you leave a certain direction, right? You were going this way north, but you turned, now you're going west. You left that direction. You moved. You turned. Where they turn from? Turn from idols. I say idols. idols. To serve the living and true God. Now we have there's so many, so many idols that we have today. There's so many things wanting us to trying to get our attention. A lot of these things say, hey, follow me, hey, come this way. Real quick, I want to turn to uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter 6. What are some of these idols? What are some of these things that, to be honest, we don't even want to turn from a lot of times. We're, we're living our life a certain way that we want to live, doing things that we want to do. But 
the Bible tells us that if you're living in sin, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Let me read this for you. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? In other words, these are people who is on this path of unrighteousness, who is following these idols, who is serving these things that they're not supposed to be serving. God's word tells us that if that's the path you're on, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, those on the path of living in sexual immorality, nor idolaters, those committing adultery with all these idols, whether it be money, whether it be power, whether it be sex, whether it be social media, whether it be video games, all these things that can be idols to us if we're not careful. Nor adulterers, people who's cheating, and we got a couple of married people here, people in relationships. If you're on this path of adultery and of cheating, you're on the wrong path. Nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor the drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. So scripture makes it very clear that we can live a certain way. We can live in sin. We all have sins in our life. I know I've committed so many sins. Before I met Christ, I was on this path of not following him. I had the blinders on. I wasn't even trying to look his way. I'm just like, God, I'm just, I'm just trying to do me. I ain't worried about following you, turning towards you. I'm good. I'm good where I am. I'm good pursuing the things that I want to pursue, living how I want to live, glorifying whatever I want to glorify. But the truth is, that's not the life that God is calling us to have. A life of sin. And scripture makes it very clear that we're all guilty. We're all sinners. We are all, but we have all. Some of us, maybe we still are. I don't know where you are right now, you walk with God. Are on this path of unrighteousness. On this path of not being an imitator. Somebody say imitate. imitate. Of not being an imitator of him, but rather we're imitating culture. Maybe we're imitating things that we learned from our parents, which may be ungodly, or things from past relationships or things we see online, we're imitating these behaviors that aren't of him. But what does God say? Or what does Paul say to this church? He praises them on how they turned, somebody say turned, to God from these idols. And so I wanna urge you, brothers and sisters, here listening, here watching, have you turned from idols? Have you turned from your sin? Have you turned to serve the living and true God? Because the truth is we, we're all imitating something. Whether we know it or not, we are imitating something. So the question that I have for you is who are you imitating? Or what are you imitating? Have you turned have you made that shift? Because it's easy to get comfortable, right? We just want to, it's easy to just stay straight, not have to worry. Just press cruise control and just ride. But if you want to turn, you can't stay on cruise control and make that turn. You, you ain't gonna make it, are you? So you have to commit to this turning. It's a, it's a step that we have to take. So I'll leave you this simple, simple question. I already posed it earlier, and I'll ask it again. Who or what are you imitating? In the way that you speak, in the way that you act, in the, in the, in the posts that you make on social media, in the pictures that you take, in the way you talk to your friends, your spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, who are you imitating? Even to your enemies, even in the midst of, of persecution, even in the midst of it being not popular to do, who are you imitating? We're gonna move into a time of reflection. And uh, if y'all remember at the very beginning, I asked y'all to do a couple things. I asked you to stand.
Uh, she just sit back down. Remember that? Mm -hmm. It seemed like it wasn't too far, too long ago. Uh, Ash trying to stand. Ash trying to sit back down. Ash trying to stand. And I seen that y'all responded to that. I seen that y'all stood up. Y'all sat down. Why? Because you heard, you heard an action. You heard, you heard a command. And you followed that. Well, God has been moving. The Holy Spirit has been moving. And He's been telling you to. He's been giving you a command. It may not have been to stand. It may not have been to sit. Maybe He gave you a command to let something go. Maybe you've been living this life, you're on this path, and you haven't turned yet. Maybe today's the day you turn. Maybe today's the day you put your pride aside. You put your um, popularity aside. You put your struggles, your worries aside. You say, God. I want to turn to you. What is God telling you to do? It may not be to stand, it may not be to sit, but He's calling you to do something. Whether it be to let something go, maybe something that isn't of Him. Maybe you haven't been a good imitator of Christ in some of your life, in the way that you speak. Maybe He's calling you to clean up your language, bro. Watch what you say. Maybe He's calling you, maybe check how you dress. I don't know what that is. But uh, I'm going to play this song, Josh, I might need your help with Justin to stand for a sec. And I just want to invite you to um, respond. Just like I, I asked y'all to stand and sit, just respond to him. Not to me, but to God. And uh, I don't know how that's going to look. Maybe he calls you to come up here and pray. I invite you. Nothing special about these places. You know, I'm sure they're sanitized, it's clean. They don't know where it's there. So the lady is calling you just to stand where you are, pray to him. Maybe the action is to just bow where you are in your seat. Maybe pray for a friend. I don't know what he's telling you to do. But let this be your time. Let this be. Uh, yeah, you good. I'm gonna switch here in a second. <laughs> Let this be your time to just just follow me. Um, oh. I got it really good. <laughs> God has been speaking. Amen? Yes, amen. I don't know if he's speaking to you, but I know he's been speaking to me. Uh, this song that I'm gonna sing is called Build My Life by a group called House Fires. And uh, we're all building our life on something. What are you building your life on? Are you imitating Christ? Or are you following your own path? Who are you imitating? Let this be your time to get right with God. Take as much time as you need. We ain't trying to rush nobody. This is your time to handle your business. It's your time to do whatever it is that God is calling you to do. Will you respond? Will you respond? Let's go a word of prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, you are so good. You know, as we as we sang earlier, even when we can't see you, you're working. We can't feel you, you're working. You're, you're all we've ever needed. Nothing more, nothing less. And God, help us to be imitators of you. Help us to just follow you in, in each and every thing that we do, each and everything that we say. Help us to build our life on you, Lord. For you are good, you are great. Help us to respond. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So again, I'm going to play. You respond. How does God want you to respond? It will not be about me.
talk about Jesus, to talk about his love and his grace. How many of y'all don't want to waver? I will build my life.